This video is about tricyclic antidepressant overdoses and poisonings. As with previous videos, I'll put all of the sources I use in the description below. So the first thing you need to know about is call for help early. You need to consult a toxicologist or poisons information center as soon as possible. And that's because these overdoses are really dangerous and outcomes can be quite bad. There's a high mortality rate um, from tricyclic overdoses. The more tricyclic you ingest, the worse it is. And the number you need to remember is 20 milligrams per kilo. Any amount above that is suggestive that there's going to be severe toxicity. Tricyclics are often referred to as dirty drugs, and this refers to their ability to have effects at several different receptors. So the first thing they do is cause sodium channel blockade, but they also cause anticholinergic effects, antihistaminergic effects, and can be potent alpha blockers. Acidic solutions are bad in the context of tricyclic overdose, and that's because in acidic pHs, more of the drug is in the active form than when the drug is in an alkaline solution. In terms of the central nervous system effects, the main ones you need to be aware of are reduced level of consciousness and coma, and seizures. In terms of respiratory effects, the main one you need to remember is respiratory depression. And then there's several cardiac effects you have to remember because of all the different receptors that tricyclics affect. The first cardiac effect I'm going to talk about is hypotension. That is a direct consequence of alpha-1 blockade, but also is a consequence of the action of tricyclics on the cardiac muscle itself. The second cardiac effect you need to remember is tachycardia, and this is again a consequence of alpha blockade, but also part of the anticholinergic toxidrome. In terms of arrhythmias, most of them are mediated by sodium channel blockade and the extent of QRS widening is important to note. So the significance of the QRS complex is that the wider it is, the more sodium channel blockade that signifies in the body. And the other thing is that very wide um, QRS complexes, for example, greater than 200 milliseconds, are also predictive of other consequences that you might get from this overdose, like the incidence of seizures. And here we've got an ECG of someone who had a tricyclic overdose, and we can see a very broad QRS complex, which is suggestive of severe toxicity. We can also see some other features of sodium channel blockade, for example, the dominant R wave in AVR. So taken together, this is a worrying ECG and indicates that the patient is at risk of complications and death and needs prompt treatment. I'm not going to go through everything about the anticholinergic toxidrome, but it's got that mnemonic that some of you will remember, which is, you know, mad as a hatter, red as a beet, hot as a hair, dry as a bone, um, that has all the features. And in this context, the main things you need to remember are delirium and um, potentially urinary retention. So what's the treatment for a tricyclic antidepressant overdose? Well, they need early intubation and control of the airway. And whilst intubating in your induction, you ideally need to hand ventilate the patient. That's to, to stop CO2 building up and making the patient more acidic, which, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, is going to make more of the drug be in the active form. The next thing in the same vein as that is alkalization of the serum. So we achieve that by giving bicarbonate in boluses of one to two millimoles per kilo. You need to aim for a pH of 7.45 to 7.55 when doing that. And there is a theoretical maximum dose of bicarbonate, which would probably be about six millimoles per kilo. So you don't want to just give them infinite amounts of bicarbonate. You need to accompany the administration of bicarbonate with hyperventilation, because if you don't blow off CO2, then the bicarbonate is not going to be effective at keeping the pH alkaline. Treat hypotension with IV fluids, and once you've ensured someone is filled well in their intravascular space, then if they're still hypotensive, you can use a vasopressor like NORAD. Uh, noradrenaline is perfect because it directly counteracts the effects of the alpha-1 blockade that tricyclics cause. Activated charcoal is an important consideration and can be given any time up to two hours after ingestion, or if they're being intubated, it can be given any time via the NG tube once the placement has been confirmed. Treat seizures with benzodiazepines, and if you haven't already, you need to intubate the patient and control the airway so you can hyperventilate them. 
What about patients that don't have any of these complications and have taken smaller overdoses and they're basically asymptomatic? Well, these patients can just be monitored for a period of six hours and providing they remain asymptomatic and don't have any evidence of um, cardiac arrhythmias or altered consciousness, then they can be discharged after that time. Almost all the complications that happen from tricyclic overdoses occur in the first six hours after ingestion.